So today we'll get into some information about your next steps as a new student, um, places to navigate on the website, and really how to get yourself situated and get started to get prepared for September. Sorry, give me one moment here. So as we begin, we would like to start off with a land acknowledgement. Um, before we, we state the acknowledgement itself, we want to acknowledge kind of the background and the understanding of why we do a land acknowledgements and why they're important. So this acknowledgement is important for us to understand the history that has brought us to reside on this land. Canada's colonial history is ongoing, as we're reminded with the recent discovery of the buried remains of hundreds of children at former residential schools across Canada. These recent announcements are a stark reminder of us, of our responsibility to learn more about our history and the profound intergenerational effects of residential schools across Canada. As an institution, we are committed to following the work of the Standing Strong Task Force here at Ryerson University, as it works to provide our community with recommendations to reconcile the legacy of Egerton Ryerson. Co-chaired by the university's elder and senior advisor on Indigenous relations and reconciliation, the task force aims to provide final recommendations regarding principles of commemoration, the university's name, and other elements of commemoration on campus before the fall semester. With that being said, I will continue with our land acknowledgement. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in a spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. We are humbled to be guests here, and we wish to acknowledge and appreciate the ways in which we benefit from living on land that is the traditional territory of Indigenous peoples. Further, we are dedicated to doing good anti-colonial work in the period of peace, respect, and reconciliation. As we get into our learning objectives for the day here, um, I would like to remind everybody that there is a Q&A pod on your Zoom screen. So if you just navigate to probably at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you will see a little window opens up for Q&A. Uh, please feel free to type any questions that you have in this Q&A box throughout the presentation. Uh, and we've got uh, several staff here um, backing us up to answer any questions that you have as they're coming in. Um, so please feel free to, to include any questions that you have there. Uh, we will go over the topics that we're going to cover. So if you want to hold on to your questions, if you think your, your subject might be covered, um, please feel free to, to wait and see the content. Um, but at any time, you're always welcome to put in the, a live question if you have it. There's also an answer tab where you can see previously answered questions. So if you wanna know what other people are asking or if you think your question may have already been asked, feel free to navigate over to the answer tab of the Q&A box and you can see which questions are happening now. So for today, we're gonna to cover a few different things to help get you situated for September. First of all, we're gonna go over the announcement for how classes are being offered in the fall. Next, we're going to have a look at the undergraduate calendar, which is going to be a really important resource for you as a student moving forward. We're going to look at selecting your liberal studies classes, which is going to be part of the enrollment process this summer. We'll touch on applying for transfer credits for those of you who are transferring from other institutions. We'll talk about setting up your Ryerson email address, award and scholarship information, applying for OSAP, and accessing RESP funding if you have an RESP set up. Aside from that, we'll also look at applying for your one card and how to go about doing that. And finally, how to get in touch with your academic department who will be a great resource for you moving forward. So as for the fall term, this is the big question right now that we're getting from a lot of students and understandably so, um, it's a little bit of a difficult time right now, knowing what's going to happen next and what to expect. 
So this fall will be a period of transition as we begin to increase the number of on-campus classes and activities, and that's preparing for a full return to campus in January 2022. So that's for the winter term. We are hoping to be back on campus. There will be ongoing updates throughout the summer months, so please continue to monitor your email address and check out the university's COVID-19 website. As more details become available, they will be posted there. So on-campus learning will continue to be prioritized specifically for courses that require in-person instruction or access to on-campus physical resources. So for this, we're referring to classes that have clinical instruction, like a nursing class, for example, or certain science programs might have labs that you have to do in person. So priority is going to be given to those classes that do require that type of in-person activity. But to be clear, uh, students in programs that are not able to offer in-person learning or students who are not able to come to campus can expect to be provided with remote learning options for the fall semester. So there will still be that virtual online component to our studies this year and our program departments will do their best to accommodate anybody who is not able to come to campus. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a hybrid model moving forward. The first place that we're going to look, and this is really sort of the foundational page for all the topics that we're going to cover today, is the new students webpage. So this is actually going to be a really great resource for you moving forward. I would encourage you to take that website listed at the top there, um, bookmark it on your browser because there's a lot of great information here that you're going to want to access over the coming months, um, allowing you to, to get yourself situated. So we'll just have a look um, at what that website really shows and you can sort of get a sense of what you're looking for. So on the page, you can see on the right hand side, we have the quick links panels, which has information on um, academics, student life, uh, financial information, what, getting your one card, setting up your portal and other resources. So if you scroll down, you'll see the very first thing is a COVID-19 announcement. So you can just check on the most up-to-date information there. You can also expand the categories that you see. So it just looks like a little box at first, but you can press the little plus sign or you can select open all and that's gonna expand every category. So you can learn more about transfer credits, admissions, enrolling for classes, um, student life like orientation and financial information and accessing your student portal. It's got all the kind of vital pieces that you're going to need moving forward. It's also got links to other resources that you might need to use. So all of the topics that we cover today in some way will be touched on on that new students webpage. So if you leave the presentation today eager looking for more information on the things that we've talked about, I do encourage you to visit that new students webpage for more information. So the first thing uh, that we're going to cover now is viewing your schedule. So new students who are admitted into the first year of their program by July are automatically enrolled into their fall and winter term required courses in early August. So you don't have to do enrollment yourself for those classes. Your department will put you into your core required classes. Since you're automatically enrolled in your required courses, your course schedule will appear on your student center in RAMS in early August. And once again, that's at my.ryerson.ca. You can go to the tab for RAMS and you'll see that schedule populate early August. During your enrollment period, which is from August 10th until September 17th, you must enroll into your elective fall and winter term courses and you can adjust your fall term course schedule. So if there's anything you want to move around, the classes that you've been automatically added into don't work for your schedule so well, you can look for other sections of that class and, and make any adjustments that you need. In early August, your program department will send you additional information about getting started. So the one tool that you'll be using to look at the courses that you're going to be taking, both the required and the electives, is the undergraduate calendar. The undergraduate calendar maps out all of your program courses. So it shows it on a term by term basis, showing all the potential course offerings for your degree. 
The program pages of the undergraduate calendar confirm the required courses by term, as well as liberal studies, professionally related or elective requirements. And uh, two of the main things that you're going to want to look at on that undergraduate calendar are the program courses and the significant dates and deadlines. Uh, let me tell you, these are going to be your two best friends as a new student here, getting yourself situated and uh, learning the ropes of how to move forward. So we'll just have a quick look at the calendar here. This is the main page on the undergraduate calendar. You can see it immediately points you to the 2021-2022 calendar, which is this year coming up. It also does a quick link to significant dates because sometimes that's what you need the quickest. But if you click the calendar itself and go to programs and courses, the first option is undergraduate programs. So if you go ahead and select that and scroll down, you'll see it has every program that we offer here at Ryerson all split up by faculty. Um, so you can just scroll through, find your particular program, and you'll be on your way to finding your classes. For today, we'll look at the accounting and finance program as an example. So we'll just expand that. You can see it gives you the program website, some program format and details like that, as well as some important policies and updates about your program. And then what we're looking at here is the first and second year accounting and finance courses. So if you expand that, you'll see first and second semester, it shows the required classes all grouped there and also the uh, required classes for your second term. And once again, you will automatically be enrolled into those specific required classes. If you click the link for the course code, that's gonna give you a description. It'll show you how long it is. So three hours per week in this case, and that it's one credit on your GPA and one billing unit. Another important piece is the prerequisite, which is a class you must take first before you take this class. So QMS 130 in this example must be taken before you can take AFF 210. And that's important to know if you are looking to enroll in upper year classes, you do have to make sure you have those prerequisites. The next thing we'll look at is the liberal studies table. So these are the classes that you will be selecting in August to enroll into yourself. So liberal studies cover a wide variety of different topics. Um, we can see there's language courses, humanities, some science classes. Um, there's a whole host of different options available to you. It's my recommendation that you create a short list of things you're interested in, because not all classes will necessarily be available, but you're going to want to look. So the lower level restrictions is also important. Uh, because this means these are classes on the liberal studies table that you cannot take depending on your program. For accounting and finance, you can see those three courses are not available as liberal studies credits. That's important to know because you're going to want to make sure not to enroll in those specific classes. The reason they are restricted is because they're a little too close to the regular content of your program and liberal studies are meant to broaden your education. Next, we're going to look at the significant dates. So this one is really important. You can see the very first section here that lets you know when classes start, when they end, when your study breaks are, uh, when the university is closed. So just some overall important dates. And then scrolling down, you can see it's got a whole list of all different dates and deadlines that you should be looking out for. It is quite a bit of information. So what I recommend is just doing a quick search I wanna know the last day to pay for fall fees, for example. So I just type that right in the search box there and I can see the first thing that comes up, the last day for full payment of undergraduate fees is Friday, September 17th, 2021. So already you've got more information than you started with. Uh, the significant dates is gonna come in really handy uh, when you're adding, dropping or swapping classes. Also on the related links, you'll wanna probably have a look at the last day to drop a course for the refund schedule. And you can see for fall, the last day to drop a fall course is November 19th. And if you scroll up just a little bit, you'll be able to see the actual refund deadline as well. So for the fall term, there's no drop charge. That means you get a full refund if you drop before September 17th. Uh, from September 18th to October 8th, it's a 50% drop charge for your class. And after October 8th, you do not receive a refund for your class. 
So this may not seem like the most important detail right now, but it's going to become a lot more interesting to you if you find yourself in a situation throughout the term uh, that you do have to drop classes for whatever reason. Uh, things do happen throughout the term and it's totally okay if you have to drop a class here and there. Uh, but before you do so, you want to make sure that you're checking those specific dates on the undergraduate calendar. Now, when it comes to selecting your liberal studies classes, again, those classes will be added on rams at my.ryerson.ca. Enrollment is subject to availability and class capacity. And the step-by-step -step enrollment instructions, so how to add classes can be found on our RAMS support webpage. So the next little video we have here is gonna go into all the different areas of RAMS support. So this is a really great tool for learning how to navigate through the pages of RAMS, which is kind of your administrative center. That's got everything that you need on it. Um, and the RAMS support webpage is a really great resource. It provides screenshots. It'll show you step by step how to use everything on your RAMS account. So when you look at the main RAMS support page, you'll probably want to have a look at student tutorials. And you can see it's got info on signing into RAMS, how to get started, and then a little bit more as well about academics and course enrollment, so how to enroll for classes. Also applying to graduate, so different admissions, graduating students. We talk about student fees, financial aid, personal information, and requesting documents. All of these will come up at one point or another in your career here. So for course enrollment, we'll have just a quick look to show you what it looks like. So here you can see we've got screenshots of what your RAMS account looks like. They show you step by step using different options for how to enroll for classes. So you could use Visual Schedule Builder, enroll from your classes offered, um, or search for individual classes. But by expanding those categories, you're going to actually get uh, really detailed step by step instructions on how to take care of that. And if you're ever in doubt, you can always contact the Service Hub as well. We're always here to help. The next topic we will cover here is transfer credits. So for those of you who are transferring from another institution, uh, you may want to look into the possibility of getting some credits that you've already completed and adding them towards your degree here at Ryerson. So we do recommend that if you're coming from another university or college, please submit your transfer credit application as soon as you've accepted your offer of admission. You want to apply nice and early. May and June are good months. Uh, this facilitates course planning as it allows you to have your transfer credit results before course enrollment in August, so you know which credits you have already. Students who are accepted into first year of their program, as you know, will automatically be enrolled into first year classes. So if you get transfer credits, you will be required to adjust your schedule based on any approved transfer credits. And you can always contact your program department if you require assistance with that. Again, you may apply for transfer credits through your RAMS account. That's at my.ryerson.ca. And you can go to the transfer credit website for more information uh, and step-by-step -step instructions as well. Also, RAM support, as we know, has all of that great support for you. So if you're having any issues or would like to see the step-by-step -step guide, check out the RAM support page for transfer credits. Another question we often get is about the Ryerson email address. So the Ryerson email address is going to be an important tool for you moving forward. Um, in early August, you will actually automatically be prompted to set up your my.ryerson username and email address when you log in to my.ryerson.ca. Um, right now, when you log into my Ryerson, you likely still use your Ryerson student number as your username. Um, but in early August, you will be prompted to actually create a regular username and the email address. Uh, it is important to set up that email address as soon as you can in August and regularly check it. Um, any communication sent from your instructors or your program department um, about getting started with studies, um, orientation activities, anything like that, um, it's all going to be sent to that Ryerson email address. So you want to make sure to set it up and have that active. Um, and you should send any emails if you're contacting the service hub or contacting your department. You do also want to send those from your Ryerson.ca account. 
Um, one thing to note is that you can also get your Ryerson um, emails redirected to your personal email inbox. So you can have a look with your email provider once you set up your Ryerson account, just to make sure you're not missing any of those important emails. Next, we're going to get into a little bit more information about financial aid. So we'll start off with a few definitions so you can kind of understand what we're referencing when we talk about financial aid. The first item is a bursary. So a bursary is financial um, assistance given to you and it's just based on financial need. Um, so it's non-repayable, it's money that you get that you don't have to pay back. An award can be based on financial need, merit and other criteria. For example, it may be in, um, based on your community involvement, volunteer work, the city you live in, and that is also non-repayable, so you don't have to pay it back, but it can be based on a number of different things. Scholarships are merit-based awards, so that depends on strong academic performance, and they do tend to be non-repayable, but they can be conditional on continued academic performance. For grants, grants are based on financial need and they're grant given to you through your OSAP application. Uh, they are non-repayable, again, so you don't have to pay them back as long as you maintain requirements. For example, with OSAP, you do have to file your taxes in order to maintain your grant funding. And a loan is the final definition we'll talk about, which is funding that is lent to you through government sources, banks, et cetera, um, and it's based on income and financial need, as well as factors such as your personal income, your parents' income, how many dependents are in your family, et cetera. So the loan portion is the only one of these examples that is actually repayable, and that's money you do have to give back. So we'll get into a little bit more information about scholarships and awards. Students who were attending a Canadian secondary school this year who meet the minimum grades and terms and conditions for the scholarship are guaranteed a renewable entrance scholarship according to the following values. So you can see that if you have an 80% or up to an 85.9, you could get $500 in your first year, all the way up to $4,000 in your first year if your average is 95% or higher. And you can see that amount does renew year after year and the potential total scholarship value is basically four times what you receive in that first year. You want to keep in mind that there are terms and conditions on that. Uh, so in order to get that renewable scholarship amount, there are certain competitive GPA requirements that you must meet in order to get that scholarship year after year. So we always recommend having a look at those terms and conditions before you proceed. Um, but to those of you who have received a renewable scholarship, um, you should receive confirmation of your award and the conditions through your Choose Ryerson Applicant Portal. Um, just so you know, half of the awarded amount that you get for your scholarship will be added to your account in August and apply towards your fall term fees. The other half is going to be added into your account in January, and that's going to apply to your winter term fees. Again, double check those uh, terms and conditions to confirm the renewable, uh, renewability criteria. Um, and just be aware that your scholarship is split in half and it comes in two installments. Um, another great resource is to apply for optional scholarships. Uh, so this is something that um, surprisingly a lot of students neglect to do when they start to attend school. Um, they don't think to seek out and look for additional financial aid, but let me tell you, it's out there. There's a lot of different funding and different support available for students. Uh, so I would absolutely recommend um, that you do create this AwardSpring account. So AwardSpring is the profile that you create um, in order to access award funding. So it's considered Ryerson's award management system. Based on the details that you provide when you're creating the AwardSpring profile, the system will actually match you to awards that you may qualify for based on your program of study and your personal details. So it's a specialized tool that's going to actually connect you to awards that you personally might be eligible for. So newly admitted students can create the AwardSpring account right away. And for those of you who have created this account already, uh, well done. And for those of you who haven't, 
Um, no pressure, but, but I would encourage you to check it out as soon as you can. You just want to make sure that after you've created the account, please do continue to check it over the summer because more awards will become available. Um, sometimes a student will see maybe an older award or something that's a little bit outdated um, and wonder oh, when is the next one coming out and all we can say is just please keep checking back there's going to be plenty of new awards scholarships bursaries all of that um, it's all going to be updating over the course of the summer months um, so we do encourage you to just continually check back on that portal. Finally, we do certainly get questions about applying for OSAP. This is a huge topic for our students. I know it was for me when I was a student as well. Um, so when it comes to OSAP, we recommend submitting your OSAP application and all the required documents that it's asking for by late June. This is to ensure that your OSAP is processed and ready to go for September. You can still apply after the end of June for your OSAP application. Um, however, your funding may be delayed at that point. Uh, it normally takes about six to eight weeks to process an OSAP application from start to finish. So you want to make sure that you're getting it in nice and early and clearing up any issues uh, or potential issues with your documentation and getting everything settled, hopefully by the end of this month. And that can ensure that everything is on track for September. So the OSAP application itself is done right through the Ontario government website. So that's osap.gov.on.ca. And you can just get started right away as soon as you get onto that website. Um, and they've got a little quiz to check for eligibility as well. Um, so we do recommend that you get that started as soon as you can. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to contact our financial aid office. Speaking of the financial aid office, we're going to have a quick look at their website and how to navigate. So you can see um, they've got right off the top the OSAP document processing time. If you've submitted documents as part of your application, you can check the type of document and the processing date. So you can see exactly which day they're working on in terms of the documentation they've received. And you can compare that to the date that you've submitted. So if it gets a little bit later in the summer, you're wondering, hey, I wonder when my document's going to be processed. Just have a look right on that main page of the financial assistance website. Under the OSAP tab, you can see there's so much helpful information about full-time, part-time, um, forms and appeals, frequently asked questions. They've got their important dates and deadlines. This is such a huge wealth of resources for you to use. If you check out the full-time OSAP application, you can see they've got actual step-by-step step by step how to apply for a full-time OSAP. So if you expand those categories, you can get all the information you need about each step of that process. So like applying, uploading your documents, getting your assessment, uh, the release of your funds, checking your RAMS account to how to make sure that your tuition has been paid, check your email and OSAP message center. And it really, really just gives you all that detail you need of the step-by-step process. Sometimes it can be a little bit confusing as a new student because you're not sure exactly how everything is supposed to go. Um, and this is quite likely your first time applying for OSAP and financial assistance. And it is a big commitment for you. So we do really recommend that you check out that website and take some time to go through it and really help yourself to understand how it works. Um, and you'll, you'll move forward feeling much more confident and assured. The next section is for students who have RESP funding. So the RESP, which is the Registered Education Savings Plan, um, is something uh, many of you folks may have. Um, you may have been saving well over time for, for this funding. Um, and part of that confirmation process is that you have to actually confirm your enrollment at Ryerson in order to actually access your RESP. So Ryerson does provide a standardized verification of enrollment um, or proof of enrollment letter for new students. It contains all of the information that's required by a financial institution. So it's got all the details that they need in order for you to access your RESP. It's also accepted in lieu of forms that they may provide you. So if your bank gives you a specific form that has to be filled out um, in order for you to access your RESP, we recommend just checking in with them if they would accept a verification of enrollment letter instead, because usually they will. And that's just a couple clicks away of getting that, that verification of enrollment letter. 
So the letter itself, you order through RAMS, which again is at my.ryerson.ca. Um, just you want to be aware that your letter will not actually be released until you've met your admission conditions. So if you have a conditional offer of admission, um, once the conditions have actually cleared on your offer, you're going to receive a letter from the admissions office saying, congratulations, you've met the conditions on your offer. So it's only after that time that you've been notified that you've cleared your conditions that your proof of enrollment or verification of enrollment letter will actually be produced because we have to confirm that um, everything is all clear and you are moving forward with studies in September. Um, another important fact that we have bolded here is that you should please try to request your verification of enrollment letter before July 23rd. Um, this is an important date as um, after this, our system takes a little bit of a break and you won't actually be able to get that letter. If you request after July 23rd, you will still get a letter, but it will only be produced once you have actually selected your courses in mid-August. So there's a few weeks, sort of this, this a break in processing from July 23rd until mid-August, um, where we can't actually create the letters during that time. So before July 23rd is your best bet. And um, if you do miss that date, that's okay. You can always request it afterwards, but just be aware that the proof of enrollment letter will be produced after you've enrolled in courses. So in terms of actually requesting that letter, you can log into my.ryerson.ca, go to the tab for RAMS, which is the, the first box here, is what shows up when you log into RAMS. Uh, the first red arrow you can see points to the academics box. When you select that, you're gonna have a whole bunch of options on the left-hand side. And what you're looking for is the, the red circle here, which says request a letter. Um, so as of right now, before July 23rd, you're looking for the verification of enrollment letter. Once that's requested, within a few days um, of meeting your admission conditions, you will get an email letting you know that that letter is ready to be accessed. It's accessed through a service called MyCreds that we use here at Ryerson. Um, it's an official documentation service, so it's a very official letter. Um, once you get that email confirming it's ready, you should be able to log in and share that letter with whoever needs to see it. Also, we wanna cover uh, getting your Ryerson One card. Um, so the One card is your official Ryerson ID card. It serves as a convenience card for many of the services on campus, including the library, the athletic center, printing and photocopying, food purchases, discounts, and more. Uh, so it's a great, great little card to have. Um, because we're not going to be fully on campus in September, um, you don't necessarily have to get your one card right away. Um, but once you do start using those on campus services it's something that you're going to want to get for sure. So the actual application for your one card can be done online. Um, the student one card website will update as more information for fall 2020 fall 2021 excuse me uh, becomes available. So Probably the easiest way is just to do a quick Google search, Ryerson One Card, and it's gonna take you to all those instructions and step-by-step -step on getting set up. The next step um, that you'll come to probably a little bit later in the summer is wanting to get in touch with your academic department. Um, so that's on Ryerson's contact page, which is ryerson.ca slash contact slash student slash academic underscore contacts. Uh, so this is gonna be a really important resource for you moving forward. Your program department and faculty will support you academically during your time at Ryerson. Uh, your program contact will be able to assist you with selecting courses, connecting you to support services. They also host orientations, workshops, and other activities to help you make the most of your time at Ryerson. So this is gonna be really uh, one of your best friends moving forward. You wanna get yourself familiarized with who your academic administrator is for your program um, because they're going to be a great resource for you throughout your time here. Uh, 
Additionally, you want to just look out for emails from your program department in early August. So again, once you've set up that Ryerson email address, you should notice that your program department is reaching out to you for next steps and uh, helping you get set up for studies. The final topic that we're going to cover today is a little bit more information about orientation week. Uh, so we do invite all of our students, whether if it's virtually doing online activities um, or if there's anything happening on campus, uh, we do encourage everybody to get involved in orientation. It takes place the week before classes begin um, and attending orientation is a really great opportunity. It gives you the chance to connect with other students. You get familiar with your program and other students who are taking classes with you. And you can really kind of see what Ryerson has to offer. So you can sign up to receive more information on our virtual orientation activities. So right now we don't have the full plan for orientation set up just yet, uh, but you can just check out the orientation website and you can sign up to get more information once it becomes available. So I would like to thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've asked plenty of questions in that Q&A chat there. Um, I will take a moment to let you know that we do have another webinar coming up. This is on July 8th. Once again, it's going to be at 3 p.m. with a recorded session at 7 p.m. Um, and this is going to feature plenty of more information. Uh, so we're going to get into a little bit more detail on July 8th about how to actually add, drop, and swap classes. We'll talk about using your D2L account and accessing your online classes, um, understanding your fees account, how to check your due dates, how to check if your payments have come in, all of that good stuff. We'll talk about different uh, upcoming important dates and things that you have to consider and how to check your schedule um, and work with your classes and more. Uh, so if you have a chance to join us or, or even you can sign up if you can't join for the live session and you would like to receive the webinar via email, um, please feel free to sign up at ryerson.ca slash service hub slash webinars. Our final point will be to please follow us on social media. Uh, so we're putting out great content all the time. We've got ongoing updates for, for new students and for current students, um, timely advice. So if a due date's coming up, uh, you don't wanna be surprised by that. If you just follow the service hub on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, um, you can stay on top of those important dates, those important deadlines, um, and much more. So we do invite you to follow us. It's at RU Service Hub. And uh, we've got plenty of information and we're always here for help. So anytime, feel free to reach out to us here at the Service Hub.